Hey everyone, thanks very much for joining me and welcome to this week's UB Chef menu. Uh, so as usual, I'm going to be cooking up nine dishes, uh, taking you through how to present them um, and just a few little tips from me. Uh, obviously you can ignore all of these of course because you're the chef at home, um, but the main thing is you have lots of fun doing it. Um, we absolutely love this week's menu, putting it together, we've got some fantastic dishes in there. The Boo Bay is a particular favourite of mine, um, lovely selection of fish, some great red mullet. Um, nice tiger prawns, cuttlefish in there as well, and also one of the main courses, uh, the little pressing of uh, short rib of beef, all flaked down, laid up between potatoes, something a little bit different. Um, but anyway, let's get to it, I'm going to show you how to put together the next uh, nine dishes, as well as our weekly bake. So, as with everything in your UB Chef box, it's basically ready just to heat up, uh, serve, and away you go. So, this is the bread, uh, this is our weekly bake, uh, this is a lovely little slab of focaccia in here, uh, with some rosemary, uh, garlic, sea salt on the top. That wants to go in the oven 12 to 14 minutes in the foil, of course. This is going to keep it from drying out. So get that in the oven now. Um, remember the oven temperature as well. It's the same for everything you're cooking here, just to make it easy from that point of view. Um, and then we're serving it with uh, something a little bit different, um, lovely rapeseed oil jam. So olive white rapeseed oil. Um, and we basically just do a few magical things to it uh, and turn it into this lovely, um, jam-like texture um, and it, this is of course this is infused with the rosemary stalks as well so give it a little stir it's almost like honey the, uh, the texture of it and then we're just going to pour that into our into our pot you want to get this out well before you're going to use it because it will warm up um, and it'll be at room temperature uh, same for a lot of the recipes worst thing is serving the fridge cold because you don't get the same taste. So get that out well before. That's going to sit on our little Yubi Chef tasting board ready for the uh, focaccia to go on uh, and we'll be back in about 10 minutes to serve up our warm focaccia. Here we go then, focaccia just come out of the oven. Be careful obviously it's still in the foil um, but it's become, uh, quite hot. So undo it carefully and then oh smell absolutely divine. So lovely little slab of it. It's already got some salt on there and it's got some uh, rosemary all on the top. But what I'd like to do is get a touch more rapeseed or olive oil, whichever you prefer. And it benefits from lots of this. Yeah, loads on the top. And then I'm just gonna add a fresh bit of little, little salt on there. Um, and then let's carve this into four nice chunks. Lovely sheen to the top of it as well. And then we'll just plate it on our board. You can buy these boards on the website as well. There we go. So, lovely little warm for catcher to get you started. Already to just dunk into that rapeseed oil jam. First start of you is a salt cod brand art. Uh, so what we've got here the brown lard, uh, this is made with potato puree, so mashed potato um, and then we've got the poached uh, salt cod uh, flaked up in here uh, but what we do with it is whip it up um, and add lots of creme fraiche to it as well so it's almost like a, a pate, sort of a, a salt cod pate in there um, and then I've got some watercress puree so what I'm going to do to start off with just put a nice spoonful of watercress puree, room temperature, important on there in the centre of your plate and then take the back of a ladle or a spoon but ladle's a bit easier and then just spread it out like so to get a really nice round shape really important for that presentation so that's all on there let's pull that out of the way and then what I've got I've got a pan of water on the stove bring that over and that's a little little trick for you take a nice big spoon Dip it in the hot water and then just go in and almost curl, start to curl your brand art. Take the spoon back out, give it another dip and then in again until so you've got a nice shape like so and then just clean the bottom off and then like so into the centre. There we go. Just clean my hands quick. So, 
What we do then is just put our water back over here out of the way. Then always take your uh, watercress and mackerel. I'm just giving mine a little bit of rapeseed oil on the top. Again, olive oil, absolutely fine. Touch of seasoning as well. And then just give that a little mix, make sure it's all coated. You don't really need to season the mackerel, oh, that's already got lots of seasoning on there. And then I'm going to take my mackerel pieces. And I'm just going to play with them. I play with that colour where you just put them around, not in such a uniform shape, but just some nice pieces. Put one on top there. You can see that lovely glistening flesh from the mackerel, absolutely stunning. They were real whopper zones that came in this week. So, a few more pieces of mackerel, like so. There we go. And then I'm going to take some nice fresh watercress and just pick those leaves down, like so. And here you can just kind of get some nice height to the dish, nice little pieces of those watercress tops. And this just really adds a beautiful flavour and texture as well to the dish where you've got that distinct pepperiness matching up with the brand art. So a few more pieces of watercress. Try not to cover anything up as you're plating it so you can see all the different components when you take it to the table. Maybe one more I'd like on there. There we go. Lovely. Beautiful. And then what we're going to do going to serve that with these nice pieces of sourdough that we've made a touch of poppy seeds on the outside as well I'm just going to put a few on the top and I'm going to go back I love the little colour of the rapeseed oil just shining off lovely nutty uh, earthy flavour to it as well and there you go nice salted cod brandard uh, watercress puree and citrus cured mackerel for the starter. Hope you enjoy it. British classic here for you now, garlic mushrooms, but not just the simple garlic mushrooms of course. So um, here we've got mushroom bavoir, um, so this is uh, lightly whipped cream, um, and then it's got a mushroom puree folded into it, and it's just lightly set. Then we've got a lovely set jelly, uh, just on the top of uh, bavoir. Really important, let this come up to room temperature before you serve it. Um, then we've got dough balls to serve with. So we've made our own little dough balls, lovely glazed uh, dough on the top of here. Um, little garlic butter, these are gonna go in the oven. Not long, six to eight minutes, just to heat up. Make sure you keep basting them uh, in that garlic butter and then they'll be lovely and glazed, full on flavor when that, when that comes out. Um, and then take a little stick out which comes with it, that's just to uh, so you can eat your dough balls with that little uh, bamboo skewer. Um, and then I've got some nice olive white mushrooms to serve it uh, with. Um, got some golden enoki in here, um, little oyster mushrooms as well. Um, so what we're gonna do is take some of those mushrooms and I'm gonna just plate a few of those on top of my bavoir. You'll see these lovely little golden enoki. And these are pickled, we'll just pickle these in a light pickling liquor and then drain it off for you and again let them come up to room temperature we're going to get a nice few of those play with the colours a little bit as well with how you place it try not to cover up all the jelly in the bottom and there we go a few more on there lovely now i've also got some little fresh herbs Tiny bit of rapeseed oil I'm just going to put on there, a touch of seasoning. And then I'm just going to take some of those out. Got some parsley, tarragon, chives in there. And just plate some of those herbs around your bavoir. It's designed when you eat for it, you'll kind of go down with the, the spoon and then you can dip the uh, dough balls in it, of course. And where the bavoir is just lightly set, it will be lovely and soft, and then it will coat the dough balls as you eat it. So, basically garlic mushrooms. A little bit more, like so, lovely. And then what we'll do, 
I'm just gonna plate that. I'm, I'm saying eat it out of this eco pot. I think they're really, really nice, uh, sustainable. And then we're just gonna wait for our dough balls to come out and then finish off the dish. So my garlic dough balls all heated up now. They've just been, let's say, about six minutes. I've basted them once or twice in that time. But now, as they come out again, and that beautiful garlic butter is all melted. Just final baste over the top. Oh, I look, they smell absolutely divine. Lovely. So, like so, tiny bit of mold and salt. Just on the top of them. And then, what I, like, what I do is just plate these all on there. There we go. Place that one final, final time. Like so. And then I'm just gonna add my little skewer so you can just pick those dough up, dunk them in your in your uh, bavoir, tiny little bit of butter, just on the top. And we are good to go. So, Posh garlic mushrooms, mushroom bavoir, mushroom jelly, baked garlic dough balls. Here we've got a partridge starter next uh, for you. Uh, so this is a combination, so we've got a uh, samosa. Uh, so this is comfy partridge leg uh, just in here. That's gonna go in the oven for about six to eight minutes or just until it's crispy. Uh, then also done a balancing of the uh, breast of partridge as well. Uh, and then it's got a little force meat just in the center. Uh, I've got caramelized celery puree to go with it, toasted hazelnuts, and also this lovely little salad uh, of uh, pickled celery with some tandoori spices in there again. So tandoori running through each of the partridge items and the salad as well. So we'll be back in a second, we'll give that six, eight minutes in there to crisp one up, and I'll show you how to plate it up. Okay, so the partridge is almost ready in there, the samosa. Just get a little bit of rapeseed oil, just dress your Spice layer X sound up a little bit, and then a little bit of mold and salt on there last second. And then your bouncing of partridge again, touch of rapeseed or olive oil, whichever you prefer, back of a spoon. That just gives a lovely little shine on the top. Again, really, really important room temperature for everything. If you prefer on the puree, you can warm that up. Um, I'm just serving that straight from here on temperature. So, nice little spoon of that in the centre. Back of a spoon, just spread that out. Like so. And then what we'll do, we'll grab the uh, samosa out of the oven. Of course you want it to be hot, but don't overcook it because the partridge can dry out if it's overcooked. Now I'm going to get some of my pieces of celeriac, the salad. We've just pickled this uh, in a light pickle with tandoori spices in there. You see I'm going to add a few pieces like so. Then I'm going to add a little bit of the valentine. So we've got Three nice pieces of balancing on there. Like so now I'm going to go back get a little bit more celeriac. It's got a nice crunch to this. And also you can just fold it over just so that you can get a little bit more height to the dish. Of course, we've done our best to get any of a shot out for you, but where it's shot games, it's just shot locally on the Isle of Wight. Sometimes there can be that stray little piece in there. So apologies in advance if there is. And then take your little samosa. I'm just gonna put that in the center. And then last but not least, some nice toasted hazelnuts. Just for that extra little bit of crunch. And the outside, and then tiny bit of rapeseed just to finish off. So, only little starter local, local shop partridge, Valentine, and samosa, the tandoori spices running through, and a tandoori spice celeriac salad. So, 
slightly different main course here for you now. Um, so this is a pressing of slow cooked Jacob's Ladder of Beef. Um, so what we've done, we've slow cooked the beef um, overnight um, and then we've picked it all off, flaked it down and we've layered it between um, very thin layers of potato, uh, slowly cooked it um, and then we've wrapped it in foil brick pastry after. It's got a layer of clean film running outside, really important to take this off obviously prior to serving but I prefer to cook it and actually finish it off, heat it up with the clean film on around the outside because it keeps it all together. So this wants to go in the oven uh, till it's nice and hot in the centre, about 15 to 20 minutes or so. so. That's all going in there. And then when that comes out, the garnishes we're going to be serving with, uh, we've got a lovely sauce of beef, so an onion sauce on there. Um, I've got a red wine sauce as well, just a little bit to drizzle around. And then we've got sauce of the in here we've got different types of artichokes, we've got roasted Jerusalem artichoke and we've got some lovely little baby globe artichokes as well which have all been prepped. Um, then we've got the last of the season uh, Isle of Wight tomatoes, um, baby little coloured tomatoes which are still beautifully sweet, really really nice. What we've done with these, we've just dehydrated them, you see there, um, so even more little flavour bombs now. And then there's some, a selection of herbs in there, so you've got parsley, tarragon, chives and of course I've got my Viege dressing which I'm going to warm up. This has got rapeseed um, and lemon juice in here, seasoning. Uh, we're going to warm that up last second, put it over our vierge uh, vegetables, give it a good stir, um, and then we'll uh, bring the whole dish together and plate it up. So here we go. All my puree is ready to go, so my sauce of beef, and then I've got my red wine sauce ready, and my dressing. As I said, take the dressing, which has been warmed up, and spoon some of that over your Viege vegetables. You shouldn't need any extra seasoning here because the seasoning is in the dressing and of course the tomatoes are shown they've all been seasoned when we cook them for you. So that's all ready to go. Then let's grab our pressing out of the oven. There it is. With this tiny bit of uh, seasoning just on there. The pit, uh, piece of thyme which has come with, just take that off, that's just a little bit of extra flavour as it cooks. And then take some of your red wine sauce. And I like to just spoon a little bit of that on the top. Gives it a lovely, beautiful glaze. And then what we'll do is take our sauce of beef. Again, use that back of a ladle technique to spread out the sauce. Nice circle, and then we'll lift out our pressing just with a little spatula, a little palette knife, like so. And then remember to take that clean film off. So just down the side, get hold of that, and off it comes. We guarantee it makes it much easier for you to get hold of it and plate it. And then nice and carefully, very very delicate. Sit your pressing on the top, that will clean down, and then we'll go back to our sauce vierge. So, I'm going to take then some of my pieces roasted artichoke first of all. This is the Jerusalem, and then those lovely baby globe artichokes. kitchen loves it when these are on the menu. They might take a little bit of time to prepare. And then we'll get some of our little dehydrated tomatoes. We'll place those just in between. Again, play with the colours. You've got the little baby orange ones and red in there as well, so you can really create that picture. More, and then of course some of those herbs. You try and get a little selection of all of them, so you've got the different tastes of the tarragon and the parsley going on. A few chives in there as well. A few more tomatoes. There we go. Have a look. Check you're happy. I want another tomato in there. There we go. And then, last but not least. 
plate, a little, little bit of a clean up there. And I'm just gonna finish off with my red wine sauce. Not too much of this, this is just uh, more for the beef benefit on here. A little more on the top. And then spoon a touch around, it's almost gonna split out that dressing from the sauce for the edge. There we go. So slightly different main course for, uh, for you there. Beautiful slow cooked Jacob's ladder of beef. Done as almost as a terrine pressed with potato, sauce vierge and soubise sauce. Here's my fish and shellfish uh, boubets up next. Uh, so of course we've got our boubets sauce. Uh, this has been made with red mullet, gurnard, bream, John Dory, um, cashmere saffron, uh, of course local tomatoes. So I've used the cherry tomatoes in here yellow and the uh, red ones so it's lovely sweet uh, flavor going through there that's just going to go on the heat but remember don't boil it um, once you boil it and really cook it a lot the flavor just disappears very very quickly and um, in the fish this is going to go in the oven just six to eight minutes just to heat up it's, it's basically cooked already uh, in there you've got mussels there's some red mullet just in the bottom um, braised cuttlefish and also we've got a nice piece of cod tiger prawns and then I've got my autumn greens, which a little bit of butter on. You can warm them up in the pan if you, if you prefer, or in the in the um, in the oven. Um, charred lemon. The reason why we char it, it makes the juice nice and sweet, so you can squeeze that all over uh, the fish. And then we've got, of course, got some bread croutons to serve, and not forgetting saffron rui to go with. So we'll get our fish in the oven now. Gonna get the lemon and the greens as well. And we'll be back in about six minutes to finish off. So my fish is already there, it's been about six minutes. And then let's get out my lemon and greens as well. My sauce. Yep, that's there. Just come up to a simmer, don't want to cook that anymore. Got my heated bowl ready to go. And then nice and quick what we're gonna do is get our greens. Just make a nice little bed to sit the fish on here. It's how I prefer to serve boobays, where the fish is all like prepared, ready to go, rather than it's got sort of bones in, you cook the whole thing from the start. I like to make the sauce with that really nice flavour of the fish in, strain it off, blitz it very, very well, and then we plate it up. So I'm going to get all these pieces of fish going through. There's my lovely bit of cod, prawns. Nice bit of cuttlefish just on the side, which we charred off. And then a little spatula, just to help me get that fillet of mullet out. That takes pride of place on the top. And then we'll put some more prawns on there. Keep a few mussels back so that you can dress them on the top so they don't get taken over by the actual boobay sauce. There we go. Then pour your sauce around so that you still you're still going to see all the lovely colours of the fish. So there we go, nice amount of sauce in there. And then I'm just going to sit my lemon just on the side. It's already just to squeeze over. I'm going to put a nice dollop of the saffron rui. Get make sure that comes up to room temperature. So. A little bit more of that, I like my rui. There we go. And then we'll take our croutons. We'll just sit them just in the back. A tiny bit of rapeseed oil. Just throw those little, a little bit of floating oil just on the top of the surface and a touch of salt just on the fish. And there's my fish and shellfish boo base. Hope you enjoy it. This week's vegetarian main course, we've got a roasted cauliflower steak. Uh, so we've just cut that off on the barbecue uh, and then we've slow cooked it with some uh, nice little herb butter on there. That's going to go in the oven. What's about 15 or so minutes in the oven? That's 15 to 20 minutes. And then also we've got our cauliflower cheese croquettes. So of course we've made a straightforward cauliflower cheese, uh, but then we've uh, coated it in a lovely little panko breadcrumb. So that's going to go in the oven together with our salsa feed, which is all char grilled. So they're all 
in the oven now. And then once they're nearly ready to go, uh, we'll get our spinach, and we'll just warm that through the pan very, very quickly, uh, just, on, just on the stove. Uh, and then I've got a little pickled walnut dressing, uh, which I'm just gonna serve at room temperature, make sure you give it a good shake, a uh, good stir, just before you uh, ready to serve it. So we'll be back in about 12, 14 minutes just to plate up the cauliflower dish. So everything's all ready to go here. My cauliflower steak, salsa fee, and cauliflower cheese croquettes have all come out of the oven. And I've got my spinach heated up, which I'm gonna take first of all. And I'm just gonna make a nice bed of spinach in the center. Like that. It's been seasoned up with some nutmeg, salt and pepper. Then I'm gonna take my cauliflower cheese croquettes. Be quite careful of these because of course they're, they're very delicate inside. So I'm gonna take some of those. There we go. And then my salsa fee. So I'm gonna put a few pieces through the center. Like so I'm gonna save a few pieces for the top as well. And take a spatula, just carefully add your cauliflower steak just to the top. Then I'm gonna finish off with a few more pieces of salsa fee on there. Like so. And then of course the pickle walnut dressing. So give it a good stir. Make sure you get some of those actual pieces of the pickled walnut in there as well. And dress so right the way over. That's gonna cut through the rich cauliflower cheese and the cauliflower steak, of course, which has been cooked in a lovely bone on that. So there we go, vegetarian course for you, roasted cauliflower steak with a cauliflower cheese croquettes, uh, buttered spinach, and a pickled walnut dressing. real classic dessert now for you, uh, rum barba. So what we've got, our rum barba, which I'm just gonna put in the oven for about four minutes. So let's go in now. And then what we've got to baste the, the, or soak the barba in is this lovely rum and citrus stock syrup. Uh, so that's gonna go back on the stove. I'm just gonna bring that up to the heat. Um, and then to serve with it, I'm serving um, orange segments, pink grapefruit, and some lovely uh, comfy zest from each. And then we've got this whipped up vanilla cream. Um, and then to glaze the bar bar, I've got this little apricot glaze. Uh, so I'm gonna wait for the bar bars to be four minutes in there, but I'm gonna show you basting it. Meanwhile, get your apricot glaze on the heat. Um, add a touch of water to it if it's too thick. But the main thing is you don't wanna to to boil it too heavy because it will caramelize on the bottom and burn. So just up to the heat where it's, it looks like it's ready to just to paint over um, over the barba. So we'll be back in a sec ready to baste our barba. Here we go then. So my barba has been, uh, I took it out of the oven and then dropped it into my pan of uh, rum syrup. And then what you want to do is keep basting that barba with the syrup. And what you'll see, the barba will almost double in size. Um, be really, really careful with it though in the final stages because of course it's a, it's a sponge, it's soaked full of that rum syrup. So it becomes very, very delicate. And then I've got my apricot glaze, all ready to go. Okay, so when you're happy with the bar bar, but it's nice and expanded, get your spoon in there, that allow it to drain a little. You see I've got a nice draining tray ready here with a jake off on. Add the bar bar to the tray. And then whilst it's still hot, get your pastry brush. Don't have one, just use a spoon and just dab or pour a little bit of that glaze over the top. And what will happen is that glaze will start to cool down and it will just provide a lovely sheen to the top of that barba. There we go. Then we're gonna take our citrus salad. I'm just gonna take my segments. I'm just gonna make a nice little base for the barba to sit on. So this is, we've got pink grapefruit, and we've got orange in here. And the zest of each, which we've blanched um, just three separate times in boiling water. And then we've again confit it very, very slowly in a little sugar syrup. So it's all the bitterness has gone. Adds a lovely, lovely little bite to the dish. So keep going like that, spend a little bit of time getting a nice presentation of all your segments. 
There we go, I'm happy with that. And then take a little bit of the zest. Let's get some of that around. Like so. Beautiful. Then your bar bar will have been drained. So again, carefully back of the spoon. Sit that on the top. Like so. And then take a nice sharp knife. Dip it in a little hot water and put a nice little slit in the top of the bar bar. Right the way down, but just don't cut right the way through. You see how I just edge the bar bar open, like that. And then dip your spoon in the hot water. Then your vanilla cream is here. Take a nice little, what we call a quenelle. Open up that bar bar and sit your lovely vanilla cream in the centre. And there you've got classic rum bar bar, citrus salad all ready to go. If you prefer as well, add some rum to the top. Um, the syrup's got quite a bit in there, but if you like it really alcoholy and really punchy, nice little bit of your favourite rum on the top. Enjoy. Lovely seasonal dessert here for you. Uh, so this is a clementine white chocolate and stem ginger cheesecake. So we've got a lovely ginger nut base on the bottom. Uh, then we've got a little delice on there. Uh, and then we've got this jelly to set on the top plate with your stem ginger and clementine, of course. Um, what we're going to do, serve it with this clementine puree. So take a nice spoon of that on the plate, like so. And then what we call in the tray the chefy swipe. Put your little palette knife or a little spoon down on there and just drag it across the plate, like so. And then, if you want to be even more chefy, get your uh, little jelly and just flash it just under the grill. Not too long though, because the whole thing will melt. That'll be a disaster. So, turn it around. And what this does will give the jelly a beautiful sheen, just on the top. So keep that moving. That's it, no, no longer than that. Just turn our grill off. Now let's take that very, very carefully with a palette knife just onto your plate, like so. And then we've done these little preserved clementines for you. So again, take a few slices of that. When you've got loads of sweetness going on in the, in the cheesecake, you just want to counteract that with some touch of bitterness from these ones. So as many as you like. Another one on there. There we go. Simple as that. Beautiful white chocolate, uh, stem ginger, clementine cheesecake, with of course our preserved clementines and clementine puree. Hope you enjoy. Last up is our weekly cheese course. Uh, this week, instead of a cheese selection, what we're doing for you is a baked Isle of White soft cheese. Uh, so of course local to us here, uh, fantastic cheese from Richard Hodgson. What we've done, we've got the cheese, we've cut a little cross just in the top, we've put a few slices of garlic in there, touch of uh, pink and black peppercorn seasoning. That's gonna go in the oven for about 18 to 22 minutes. But the way to tell, just give it a push uh, when it's in the oven. If it feels nice and molten, nice and melted inside, take it out. Okay, so that's going in the oven now. Set our timer. And then what we're doing, we're serving that with a malted cracker. So this we just put it through the pasta machine, lovely crisp cracker with that malt flavour going through. And then I'm gonna, nice little bent fork, which you can do quite easily. Just stack some of your pieces of cracker in there, like so. There we go. And then give your chutney a stir. So we've got this nice little spiced pear chutney to go with it. Make sure that's at room temperature. And then we'll be back in about 18 minutes when that cheese is ready to go. We're gonna give it a little rest for four minutes just so it sort of firms up just slightly. Otherwise it will just go like that all over the plate. So we're back to serve up 18 minutes. Okay, so my other white cheese has been just sat there now for about four minutes. So I'm just gonna get a little spatula in there. Carefully lift that out. And then I prefer just to serve this in the paper. 
So just pull back the paper like so. And as you do, you get this lovely waft of all that thyme and garlic in the centre. And then what we'll do, we've got some thyme on there. I'm just going to put that to the side. I'm going to take a little bit of a chutney. And I'm just going to serve that literally in the paper as well, just on the side, like so, with that little bit of thyme on the top. And then I'm going to put it straight onto my board. And that is all ready just to take to your table. I literally get those crackers, crack on in there. Absolutely beautiful. Hope you enjoy it.